the, the business uh, people here are, are kind of uh, wait and see the attitude and um, you know uh, they got to be more conservative this year. Everybody says it's, it's, it's a difficult time but for me it's, it's the best time for new venture. When everybody stops uh, you know you, you can move, you can go um, uh, where everybody is turned right you can go to the left you know and, and you, uh, it's the best way to, to do the opposite. So for new venture um, uh, why not? Uh, Starbucks and, and McDonald's are coming to Vietnam. They must have uh, uh, their calculations uh, very well. This program is brought to you by Guokaland Group. Shopping is big business in Hong Kong, and luxury shopping is big money. No one else is better than my guest this week, Balbina Wong. She's the one who gave the Chinese their first taste of Prada and Gucci. And she's also instrumental for the success of names like Marc Jacobs and Ferragamo in Greater China today. So how does this power broker of luxury fashion do it. This week, I hit the stores to find out. Belbina Wall may not be known to the Chinese tourists filling their bags along Hong Kong's Canton Road, but to fashion insiders, she is no ordinary passerby. The Singapore-born, Hong Kong-based Swiss national is an institution in the luxury retail scene in Greater China. In 1994, just three years after McDonald's opened its first restaurant in Beijing, she set up Maison Mode in Shanghai, stocking the likes of Prada, Gucci, Cartier and Ferragamo. Twenty years on, she runs a group that represents 18 international brands in Asia. Sales hit 700 million US dollars last year. Her long-standing friendship with luxury fashion houses like Ferragamo is well known, and the Doyen herself jokes that she's practically a Balbina Ferragamo. Ms. Balbina Wong, thank you very much for joining me on Powerlist Asia. Now, legend has it that 20 years ago, you stood at the Bund in Shanghai with the three Ferragamo brothers. And you pointed out to them this mass of mangroves and paddy fields, and you said to them, this is your future, to their bemusement. They were surprised. You know, 20 years ago, you see nothing but bicycles and taxis. What did you see that others couldn't see? Do you know, I could feel that this is a sleeping dragon going to wake up. I could also sense that the people are keen, they are eager, and I could see that there is an energy in Shanghai, like I could see 40 years ago in Hong Kong. I started in Shanghai at Maison Mode with a cluster of international brands. It was not big expenses in those days to set up everybody in there but it is really a trial and error and it worked it took eight years for imaginex to finally see some form of returns on investment would you say that that is perhaps one of the disadvantages of being the first mover that it actually does have to take that long to to see some profits yes it took us about eight years but it was only a small slice of my Hong Kong business I think it's a calculated risk and I think it's a risk for the future so I wouldn't say we lost millions and millions you know of course when you start something you have to have a long-term vision and this I had I had the vision 
of seeing how this market will grow. And uh, in fact, the fact that the last decade has grown so much, it has compensated, I don't know, how many times of the loss when we started in the beginning. So what would your forecast be for the next 15 years from here on? For the next 15 years, it will continue. It was just growing so fast the last three years, like it's just beyond our expectation. So there will be a correction. It will be a normalization. Mm. But look at it. The last GDP results for China was 7.9% growth. Where in the world today you have 7.9% growth? But China will grow for the next 15, 20 years. With more Chinese going overseas and spending their money overseas and, and spending their money on luxury products overseas, going to Milan, going to Paris to buy the products over there, will that affect your business in China? No. China is so big. In fact, the more cities that we go into China, Every city has its customers. We have only been in about 50 cities. People, you only have to take 7, 8, 10%. It's already uh, 130 million people that can afford eventually. And now, I think now we are about 5, 6%. Yeah. I mean, that is already a huge market. And it will continue to grow as every city grows. How do you judge when a store is doing well? Well, what through sort of the sales, time frame, what sort of time frame are you looking at? I would look at two years. And if I don't start doing well now, the third year would I would chop. You're as far as Urumqi, which is yeah. close to Russia. Yeah. Why go so far? Do you really have a market there? You know, even if it is one percent or half a percent, it's enough in with one shopping mall that carry all the brand. Urumqi is a very rich mining oil rich province they have nowhere to shop to take a plane from urumji to beijing you have to go by chindu and Beijing or some direct to Beijing. it's like six hours mm. i guess it's going to be opening more because people have money there they don't know where to spend. So the stores are doing well, sales are good? Tremendous. The numbers are growing. They have grown in three years, four or five times. The numbers would be big. The numbers on a shopping mall like that will be approximately about 800 million to a billion. So what's the next frontier beyond China? Ah. <sighs> What is the next frontier? I'd like to one day own a brand. You know, I don't want to go into India or places like that that is unknown to me. There is enough for me to do to grow Southeast Asia and also so much for me to do in Greater China. I think I, I know best this channel. And that's where your uniqueness to your, contri your contribution to the fashion industry comes into play because you've been there for the last, what, 30 years? 50 years. Yeah. I, I'm, a, I'm ancient. <laughs> no, experienced is the word. Experienced. <laughs> oh, experience. After the break. But what makes a brand work? It's instinctive. But I have no crystal ball. I'm not a clairvoyant. <laughs> so...
Once upon a time, a handsome prince met a beautiful princess. They fell in love, got married, and now she wants a kid? The funniest couple on TV is back. Mina desperately wants a baby, but Doll isn't ready. What do you think, son? I put it check below, eh? Don't miss the new season of Doll and Mina. Every Friday, 8.30 p.m., only on Surya. Cerebral palsy victim Han Myung Sung is categorized as Grade 1. In South Korea, the disabled are graded. The grade determines the help they get. And the disabled are saying it's an unfair system. Get Real finds out just how many fall through the cracks. Missing the grade, Get Real, tonight at 9.30 on Channel News Asia. You've seen your fair share of brands that have come under you. Uh, you've, let's take Gucci and Prada, for instance. The, you introduced them to the Chinese market. They took off, uh, and shortly after that, they've decided to go out on their own. So yes. they left the fold. Were you hurt when that happened? No, not at all. Because I started with them small, I brought them in. In fact, I was proud doing that. Doing what? Bringing them in? Bringing them in, having them all in Maison mode. I have a sense of pride that I was the first. How did you feel when they said, we're going on it on oh, our own? I think in our business, as we are business people. They are business people. And it is inevitable they will go on their own. We always part very well. Very well. There's never any uh, uh, sadness or anything because, it, for instance, like Coach was the same. I put Coach in the market. In China, in Hong Kong, I get you know I, I I got the best location for them in Central and in Canton Road and and uh, I knew that it was only going to be a short term, five years and then it's, it's time. And I'm still very good friends with the CEO of Coach Liu Frankfurt. I mean, it's brands come and go, but what makes a brand work? I think uh, the management of the brand is very important. The quality of the brand is also very important. And who runs the brand is also very important. Like a marriage, it's, so, it's not always work, but so far, I would say 90 over percent of my business worked. You call yourself Imagine Next, so the question is, what is the X factor that you bring to the brands oh, that you carry? That's a tough one. Why would a brand want to go with you instead of going with a competitor, perhaps? Because we give them the best service. We have a passion for developing brands. We are known. We have the best infrastructure in China. For a brand that is medium-sized, it's not easy to suddenly want to infiltrate into 50 cities which I'm in. It's, it's massive. So they come in with us. So it's your network, it's your infrastructure. It's my there. network. It's knowing all the landlords because I started with them. It's not just about luxury brands on the ground floor. You've got to feel second, third, fourth, fifth floor. So we speak with some muscles, let's put it that way, to go into the market. Uh, this is the wrong time. Yes, yes. At the company's showroom in Hong Kong, the project team is briefing Belvina on plans for the flagship Paul and Shark store here. It's slated to open by May 2013, in time for China's Golden Week. Yeah. This is just one of 50 new stores opening in Greater China and Singapore in the next six months. Melvina Wong has been credited for her ability to spot emerging brands that the Chinese will love. 
and the 70-year-old continues to wield her fashion wand for retail success. Let's talk about brands like Paul and Shark and Philip Lim. Um, they aren't exactly top of mind brands when when it comes to the Chinese, for instance. So when you bring in a, a relatively new brand into the market, how do you shape the perception of the customer in China? First of all, again, when we bring in brands, we look at the product, we look at the designer. Paul and Shark is a casual wear, but with a touch of luxury. They are very high tech in the fabrication. They even do their own yarn for their knitwear. Uh, when they do fits, everything is computerized. But it's quite new you, uh, to the Chinese. You for a lot of brands before that. How do you and make it a preferred brand for the Chinese? Because we were early. As I say, we started with one. Uh, Paul and Jacques today have nearly 500 shops in the world in uh, over 300 cities. At the end of the day, why would people pay you know, for a jacket $7,000, $8,000? Because what they produce is what today the men wants. The president of Marc Jacobs once said that all you did was to decide in half a second that his clothes would sell in China. Wow. <laughs> Obviously, it's not knowledge. It's instincts that, that, that tell you yes. when something works and if something doesn't work. Yes. Well, actually, I'm surprised. I haven't heard that. I'm instinctive. I can look at the collection, but it doesn't take me a second. <laughs> no, I can look at the collection and place, place it in my mind to see whether this is for our market. A collection is huge. You have to cherry pick. Um, it's instinctive, but I have no crystal ball. I'm not a clairvoyant. Is it transferable? Can you teach someone to be as instinctive as yourself? Yes, in some ways you can. A true merchant, you can. You know? How? You can teach them to put the collection together, why this colour goes with this, and why you want narrow pants with loose tops. And in the evening, when you have a nice evening jacket, you want flare pants, you know. You can teach. To a certain extent, you can teach. Have you been but able you to teach. teach any of yes, your people? absolutely. Can they replace you? Oh, nobody is irreplaceable. <laughs> nobody is irreplaceable. Of course they can. Maybe even smarter than me. After the break, Balbina Wong's regrets and her thoughts on being woman in charge. Lady, of course, they call me Dragon Lady. <laughs> Japan has suddenly gotten serious about getting out of its economic rut. All the numbers. Let's talk about the GDP numbers. Break it down for us. All you need to know to do business in Asia. Myanmar has been transformed from a human rights pariah into a golden business destination. Can I really have any faith that it's now an OK place to do business? Business Central, now at the brand new time of 9 p.m. Every weeknight on Channel News Asia. Livelihoods inherited from ancestors. Bonds built aboard boats. A community generations old drifting apart by the pool of progress. A floating market in Vietnam falling out of favor amidst a rising tide of change. On Crossroads, Wednesday, 8.30 p.m., exclusively on Channel News Asia.
or in the air, you can always be assured of our five-star service. Qatar Airways, world's five-star airline. Tell me how your circumstances when you were growing up made you the woman that you are today. I think it's my determination to get further because I come from a poor family, family of seven, and I'm the sixth. And I never finished school because I had to work. And I come, wait to have a job to help the family. Work was everything to me, to keep proving. And I really started as a cosmetic girl. And it was truly step by step. And I never give up. And I never say die. Did you see yourself doing what you're doing now? you know, what, 50 years ago? Uh, not this far. Honestly, not this far. I must say I'm very, very blessed. And timing is everything. And you stopped formal education yes. at about secondary yes. two in Singapore, yes. which is in the middle of high school. Yes. And I'm wondering whether that has contributed to the fact that your instincts are so sharp, it's not blunted by academia. Yes. Probably, if I had finished school and I went to, uh, you know, university and all that, I don't know whether I would have this opportunity now. Uh, I guess it's fate. It's my destiny. Uh, but I always think in my he head, hard work never kills. But you have to work smart. You have to have a lot of common sense. And I always tell my staff that you all have an opportunity. If I can do it, you all can do it. You sound like a good boss. <laughs> Tough, but I'm very fair. You think that's really a softy inside, but I'm tough. So I want results, what? but I'm fair. What's your response when people, you know, Typically, when you mention the word lady boss, they would roll their eyes in disdain. Lady boss? They call me dragon lady. <laughs> <laughs> they just, that's the dragon lady. It's amazing. If I have to walk through the office now, on the other side where we have about 200 people, 300 people, the moment they, they hear my steps, it's all like attention and working, you know? And I don't even have to say a word. No, I... I I, I, I have very good people, I joke with them, and I'm also very serious with them. So you ha and you also have to make yourself known to them, and you also have to be kind to them when they make mistakes also. So it's always a carrot and a stick. Now, you've been given many, many titles in your... In your illustrious career and all of them point to the fact that you are the doyen of luxury and fashion uh, in China. Do you enjoy the attention? Mm, not really, you know, I mean, uh, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm happy and uh, sometimes I wonder, it's really only work, but sometimes I have a slight proudness inside me that I have accomplished but I don't take things for granted. What uh, don't you take for granted? The fact that I'm a donia and this and you know I, I still have a boss and I still have to obey my boss. I still have somebody above me you know. There are always sacrifices that one has to make to reach the top. What would you say are some of the sacrifices that you have had to one make? One of the big sacrifices is my daughter putting her into boarding school at nine and seeing her like four times a year where I pursue my career, I was so determined. And that was a bit of a sadness for me because we kind of grew apart for a while. And going through a divorce, that was sad. And that was, nothing will stop me 
in my career, and that was, you know, over 25 years ago, 20 years ago. And, 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 and that is with some regret that I didn't spend much time with her. But that is gone. I mean, that is, let bygones be bygones. Today we are so close. We are on the phone every other day. And she is so proud of me, and I'm, and I'm very proud of her as a, a mother. You're 70 this year. You'll be 70 yes. in March. Uh, and um, you still come to work every day. You travel six, seven times a year. Uh, and you haven't seemed to slow down at all. I was like wind and fire in those days. I never forget when I used to go to Frankfurt Fair with a whole buying team. I have four or five of them. By the time they finish, when the fair closes, they were huffing and puffing and huffing and puffing. And I was still going on. And uh, it was hard for them to keep up. I never forget that 20 years ago. But today, I will take my time. I'll be at their pace. <laughs> I'm still not slow, but I'll be at their pace. But I was, I was very fast before. You'll always be the consummate connoisseur of luxury and fashion. Well, I wouldn't say that, you know. There are so many young people coming up, you know, and uh, they're ten times better than me. But certainly, you are inimitable altogether. Thank you. It's been a pleasure speaking with you, Ms. Wong. Thank you for your time. Pleasure. program was brought to you by Gwoka Land Group. The health and wealth of many are in the hands of Dr. Lim Chok Ping. He's the man in charge of the world's second largest healthcare network, IHH Healthcare. It is ever exciting. Once you finish with your country, you look beyond your country. How does Dr. Lim strike a balance between service and bottom line? Find out on Powerlist Asia, Monday at a new time of 8 p.m. This program is brought to you by Guokaland Group. Even as Asia unwinds, the news keeps unfolding. Duchess of Cambridge. Well, the real question is, will another... Keep track of global developments. For the first time, a missile slammed into the West Bank. Breaking stories. And events that impact Asia. Now the diplomatic incident between Washington and Beijing. The news doesn't stop. Right here on News Pulse. On Channel News Asia. For the last six months, solidarity against disabled discrimination an advocacy group has been protesting at this subway station.